make another thing. <laughs> What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here at this tiny home again. I did a tour of it in last week's video. If you haven't seen that, go check it out. But today I'm just gonna give you behind the scenes of how I film these videos and how I stay in all these Airbnbs. So I guess first of all is how do I even stay in these Airbnbs? I typically find them on Airbnb. I'll find a couple in the same area so I can stay at a couple throughout the night and throughout the week. And I'll just message them on Airbnb, throwing out my offer for a one or two night stay in return for a YouTube video. And I'll send them the name of my channel. Now, Airbnb is really tricky. You can't send links. You can't send them or tell them that you will send them links through an email. You can't give them your email. It's kind of crazy. So sometimes I'll message them through Airbnb like that. And it's really low key and chill and they usually say yes or no other times I will try to find their website or Instagram and I'll message them through there so I can send them you know my media kit and a proposal that kind of just lays out everything and how it works and one of those ways typically works but a lot of times they don't so let's just say they all work and they agree to everything then I'll drive down and I'll come and you get to of course the Airbnb and hopefully it's not raining sometimes it does rain and it is raining bad <laughs> to cut this video but you can't get away from that and just depending on the sunlight throughout the day I will start with filming the outside so right here as you can see is my setup you can come around front maybe and I'll show you so this is basically what I see the lens the mic and so I can see myself right here and typically I'm just a one-man show so this is my setup so I'll sit up here and I'll just record myself talking and I don't have a script. I will record the whole thing at once. It might take 20 minutes and I'll make a bunch of cuts, but I just, in my mind, picture out the layout of the home and talk about everything. No script, and I just kind of wing it. So that's how I do that. So the gear that I use, this isn't the lens I typically use. The one I use is on that camera. It's a 20 millimeter 1.8. I'll use a Sony a7 III. I got a mic, a Rode mic. Any Rode mic really works. I think they're all great. And I got the Shinobi monitor up here. This was $400 and this is a lifesaver because I can see myself and it is wonderful. Other than that, I got the cage for the Sony and just a tripod. I have a couple other pieces of gear. We'll get into that next. All right, now we got a new setup. It's basically just the camera body with lens and this gimbal. And this is how I get all of my B-roll. And it's really nice. This is the Zaheen Crane version two or something. I don't know, the thick handle. Doesn't matter what gimbal you use or gear, just as long as you have some and you're working with it. This is what I use. Very simple setup, because I like to pack light and not worry about a lot of things. So now that I got this on the gimbal, this is typically what I do first, because it gets me thinking about the home and I can see everything. Then I do the talking part, but who cares? Now we're on to the B-roll part, and this is how I'll shoot B-roll the outside of the home. So basically it just depends what type of home it is. Some require a ton of B-roll, some don't. This one behind me really doesn't because it's so tiny, so a key factor is kind of just getting all the angles. There's three core angles from the left, middle, and right, and I'll just get B-roll from all those, and then I'll get up close and kind of just do the same thing. So this is kind of what that will look like. After you get all that done, I come up to the home and I'll get like up close tight shots of anything I find interesting in the front of the home. So like for this one example, this one has a light and the shutters right there. It's really nice. So I'll just get up close and you know, I'll just do my thing. And you just get the shots. Or like this flower bed right here, I would just do a painting shot going down like that and I get it. I shoot all in slow-mo, of course, 60 frames, so I can slow it down to 24. And another thing is I typically shoot in a log profile just so I can get the best color range and dynamic out of it. It adds another step to the editing process, which I do on Final Cut Pro, but I think it's really worth it. Does it really matter if you're just starting out? No, but once you start out and you wanna get and change and make your videos just a little bit more poppy or whatever, you can do that. So now I got the outside done, and now we're gonna go in the inside and I'll show you how we do that. All right, now we're in the tiny home. As you can see, it is very tiny. So I'll be looking around and I'm just thinking about how I want to do things and I'll just section it off by rooms. So for this one example, I'll section off the bedroom slash living room in one whole segment. So I'll just shoot a bunch of B-roll of it from a bunch of different angles and this is kind of what that looks like. on to 
the bathroom. One thing that is very important with shooting homes is the lighting. A lot of homes suck at lighting really bad, so I always try to not even use it, and I always try to use natural lighting, which 90% of the time, my shots are only lit by natural light, and that's what I like. I think that's what looks best. Like this bathroom, I don't know if you can see behind me, it looks pretty good in the natural light, but now if you swing over this way, the shower is actually really dark. So you just gotta play around with that and just adjust kind of what you're doing. You might have to turn the lights on, but most of the time it's gonna look ugly. So after I get all the B-roll done, now I wanna incorporate shots of like me doing things or somebody. So what I'll do is, luckily this thing comes with a little tripod on it. So a lot of times I'll just go over here and maybe set up the shot like that and I will come over here and this might be a good shot for if I'm trying to showcase the bathroom. So I'll just have the shot set up and I'll just open the door and that will be the shot. <laughs> really simple. So I'll just set this camera up in a bunch of different locations and shoot myself doing random things. So another shot is I might just have the camera set up in the same spot right here and now I'll be walking up the ladder and that'll be the whole shot. Super simple, nothing to it. And then I'll fake it and then just come right back down and then pick up the camera and fake another thing. <laughs> so after all of that and after all of filming, it might look a little something like this. guys today we are here with another airbnb and it's this beautiful tiny house right behind me thank you guys for watching this video i hope this helped you guys out a lot i did real estate photography for a very long time a couple years so i've kind of naturally learned just what angles work best for me and it's kind of just a system for each home there's a routine for each home and it just makes it really simple can get creative in some certain aspects which is also a nice thing so that's kind of how i got into this and one other thing is i'll take the photos so it's just really easy you don't require any of this that's a lot less gear just the camera and lens and I'll kind of just do the same thing you just get the same angles with the photos and that's why I pick my thumbnail and everything in that nature or for Instagram and that's basically it and that's the tour and the photos so thank you guys for watching this video I'll have another video very soon in the next couple days or next week and I'll see you then